Hi, welcome back. I'm going to share one very basic stuff about stable diffusion. Before that, I have questions asking me what uh, checkpoint I use. I use uh, Lucky Strike Mix. I just like the style of it. You can find it on Civita here. Right, and this is what I use to generate all the images on my, on my YouTube channel. Okay, basics. First with the prompts, right? You normally put in commas. You don't have to put in commas. You can delete all the commas. The prompt still works. Some people actually use things like this to break up sections, that's fine or so. It doesn't matter. Also, arrangements of prompts don't matter too. Just type whatever you want. Of course, with commas, it's easier to look at. There's some shortcuts, like 21 years old can be spelled as Y-O. There is a counter here, 44 slash 75. It just means a token limit of 75 words. You can do more words, it doesn't matter. For this section, Negative prompts, most easiest way is to go to the CV type page of a checkpoint and just copy and paste any negative prompts you see. I'm over here on the Lucky Strike page. This person has posted the negative prompt, I just copy and paste. For sampling methods, most people use Euler A, Euler or any of the, the last two DPM sampling methods. That's it. I don't see anybody else using any of the sampling methods. So just use this for Number of sampling steps, most people will put 20 to 40. The most upper limit is around 50 to 60. Uh, the more steps you have, the more detailed the image generation is. With more sampling steps, it takes longer to generate. A lower sampling step by 20 takes really fast to generate. Ideally, between 20 to 40 sampling steps is fine. These three options here, restore faces, tiling, and high res fix, don't click on it. It just wastes your time only. There's better ways to generate higher res images. I'll show it in later videos. For dimensions, stable diffusion gives a 512 by 512. It gives a very ugly square image. You want a better looking one? Most people will use 512 by 768 and you give you something like this image here. If you want a landscape image, go for 960 by 540. So these are the two aspect ratios. Don't use anything else. Batch count refers to the number of image generated. Let's say if I put three here, when, when I press generate here, you generate three images. And batch size here refers to the number of sets. So if I put two here, it will generate two batches of three images. For CFG scale, most people go either seven or eight. The lower the CFG number means it has more creative freedom from your prompts. The higher the CFG number means that it follows more closely towards your prompts. Feel free to experiment. This sheet here defaults to minus one. Minus one means it totally generates a random image based on your prompts. The two icons here first is set seed to minus one, which will create a new random seed or random image every time you press generate. If you want the next generation to follow closely to this image that you generated, click on this green icon here. Once you click on it, there's a specific seed number and this corresponds to this particular image. So it tells Stable Diffusion to generate something close to this or quite similar to this. I have no idea what Extra does, <laughs> so I ignore it. Underneath the Generate button, there's a couple of smaller buttons. This one we've used in the previous video to copy generation data from CVTI and just automatically put everything in the positive and negative prompts. This trash can here will clear the prompt. It means it deletes your negative and positive prompts. Show and hide extra networks we showed previously, it will open a panel here and that's where you can just click on a particular LoRa that you want to use. Click on this and the LoRa will appear. Do know that for some LoRas, you do need some kind of trigger word like this in order for the LoRa to be effective. If you're not sure what the trigger words are, go to that particular LoRa page on CVTI and check out the instructions there. If you really like your particular setting, you can actually save these settings by clicking on this last button here. It saves this particular style. Once you click on it, it gives you a text box and you can name your style, right? Click OK and this style will appear in the styles part portion here, right? Note that I've already saved a base style 01 here. So anytime you want to use the style, click on this particular style and then click on this button above here and you apply the selected style to the current prompt. So it makes things really fast. So you then write a lot of things all over again. Very convenient. Once you're happy with everything, just click on generate. To stop the generation, click on interrupt. It will stop the image and give you a very, very ugly image. If you want to skip certain things, like I have three images generated here, you can click on skip here. It will skip this 
particular image. Okay, that's it. Three images generated. To pick those images up, go to your Google Drive, go Stable Diffusion Web UI, go to Outputs, click on Text to Images, because that's where we generated it. We generated in Text to Image. So we click on Text to Images, and it's sorted by date here. So click on the date. All right, and I have my three images. Let's say I want this image, it looks really nice. Click here and then just click download. It will download the image to my computer. That's it, basic run through of the stable diffusion. More to come in other videos. Thanks and bye.